Hello everyone, welcome to Practical Math Week 9. We're going to get into how expensive are payday loans. This is a real world math class, applying math to finance and economics. So here's the essential question for today. How do you determine the total cost of a payday loan? Alright, well as we dig into that, we're going to determine payday loans, talk about what they are, given the amount that you finance, finance charges, and the terms of the loan in weeks. We're going to get into some graphing. We're going to graph the relationships between the number of times a payday loan is renewed and the total cost of the loan. We're going to rearrange the equation for a total cost of the payday loan to determine finance charges. And then we're going to get into this thing called the APR. That's the annual percentage rate of a payday loan. And compare it to APRs of other loans. So take notes. Use this video. Have it open as you're working through the quiz, as the problems this week. Um, let me know if you have any questions as you're working with the assignments. We're on week nine. We're three quarters of the way through the first semester. All right, here's the scenario. What would you do? Your car that you rely on for work breaks down. Bummer. You take it into the shop and they say it's going to cost you $300 for you to get it fixed. However, what would you do if you didn't have $300 saved? It's a predicament lots of people face, right? Many people find themselves in some sort of situation like this. It's an unexpected cost that they're not financially ready for. And one way of problem solving or getting money fast for emergency situations like this is through what's called a payday loan. A payday loan might also be called a cash advanced or a check loan. It is a short-term loan generally for $500 or less, that is typically due on your next payday. So if you get paid every two weeks or if you get paid once a month, it's sort of borrowing money that you're going to get paid for the emergency that you have right now. Payday loans generally have three features. Their loans are for small amounts. The loans typically come due your next payday. It's what I call payday loans. And you must give lenders access to your checking account or write a check for the full balance in advance that the lender has an option of depositing when the loan comes due. Other loan features can vary. For example, payday loans are often structured to be paid off in one lump sum payment. But there's also interest only payments, renewals or rollovers are not unusual as well. In some cases, payday loans may be structured so that they are repayable in installments over a longer period of time. Some ways that the lenders might give you the loan funds include giving you a cash or check right up front. So you give them your checking account or you give them a check and they give you cash right then and there. They may give you the funds on a prepaid debit card that you could then use to cover your emergency. Or if you give them your check, they can electronically deposit the money right into your checking account right there, knowing that you have to then pay it back in a little bit. Here's the big catch. A payday loan, people are giving you money, but it is not for free. Yikes. So the cost of the loan, right? These payday loan companies want to make money. is called the finance charge. And it may range anywhere from $10 to $30 for every $100 that you borrow. A typical two-week payday loan with a $15 per $100 fee equates to an annual percentage rate, that's an APR, annual percentage rate, of almost 400%, which is really, really high. By comparison, the APR on credit cards, if you take out that Visa card or Discover card or something, it ranges from about 12% to 30%. That's your credit card and they're making money. So a payday loan, it's convenient. You can get money for emergencies right now, but they charge a lot for that conveniency. In fact, they charge so much that state laws and other factors can influence how much you can borrow and the fees you are charged. Some states do not have payday lending storefronts because these loans are not permitted by the state's law. Generally what happens is people who don't have very much money take out the payday loans and so it's an exploitation of people who don't have very much money in the first place, taking advantage of their situation. So some states actually do not even allow payday loans or 
because lenders may not choose to do business in a state rather than by the state's regulations. So some states make it really hard for payday loans to do this kind of stuff, but some states do allow it. It's increasingly become an issue over the last five, 10 years. There are also special protections through the Military Lending Act for active duty service members and their dependents who use certain payday loans and other small dollar credit profit products. So that, this is a really big point I wanna make is payday loans Understanding what a loan is and how certain loans work and the cost of these loans is kind of the whole point of this lesson. And so even though we're talking about payday loans, it'll help you see other loans like school loans, credit card loans, car loans, have a better understanding of how you pay for these loans and how expensive they can be. Okay, we're gonna watch a video showing a scenario of just how expensive a payday loan can become. John's truck broke down, and he needed money quickly to get it fixed. He couldn't get a loan, and his credit card was maxed out. So, John went to a payday lender. To get his $500 in cash, he had to give the lender a check for $575. $500 to repay the loan, and $75 for a fee. John didn't have the money in his account right then, but it didn't matter. The lender would hold the check for two weeks, until the loan was due. But after two weeks, John didn't have enough money to pay back the loan. So he paid the lender $75 more to roll over his loan. That means he got two more weeks to repay the loan. And two weeks later, the same thing happened. John paid another $75. That bought another two weeks to pay back the loan. It took John 12 weeks, that's three months, to save enough money to repay the original $500 loan. In the end, John paid $1,025 when he only needed $500. That was a really expensive loan. All right, pretty interesting, right? Hopefully you were able to follow all that. Let's break down and let's get a little bit more into the math behind what's going on for the payday loans here. All right, got my pen on. We're gonna first start by making a table. We're gonna show the increased cost that our friend John in the video was facing when he took the payday loan to get his truck fixed. So remember, the loan was $500, but with a payday loan, he had a $75 fee for every two weeks. So assuming in two weeks when he got his paycheck, he would pay it back. All right, so let's break down the cost of this loan. Assuming he doesn't pay it right back in two weeks. So we have zero weeks, two weeks later, four weeks later, six, eight, 10, 12. We're gonna go out for 14 weeks. Now the cost initially is he has to pay $500 plus the $75 fee for two, to be able to borrow that money for two weeks. So if he only took the loan for two weeks, it's gonna cost him $575, right? Now two weeks comes by, he's supposed to pay that $575 back, the $500 loan plus the $75 fee, but he can't, so he pays another $75 to roll it over into another two weeks. So we're gonna add 75 more dollars to this, and now the cost of his loan is up to 650. So it extends it, he doesn't quite have the money to pay back, his other stuff comes up. He gets another two weeks, so now four weeks is later and it's time to pay back everything. And he still can't. He doesn't have the amount of money, so we gotta roll over another $75 fee. So now that loan becomes $725. And if we keep going week after week after week, every two weeks, the cost is another $75 for two weeks. So we're gonna play out with this. It'd be $800 after six weeks, 875, 950, 1,025, and $1,100. Now you see this loan quickly became really expensive, right? After 14 weeks, so about three months, three and a half months, he's able to pay 75 bucks to keep rolling it over, 
but he's not able to come up and put together the whole 500 bucks. He just doesn't make it enough. And this is, it becomes a really expensive trap. He can't get out of it. He had to take the money initially to be able to cover that emergency, but it's really hard. He's not ever able to save enough money to get out of it, and it really becomes expensive. He's paying that much money over and over and over again. Okay, now that we have a nice table of values, let's look at them graphically. We can plot them on a graph to visualize the growth. And to do that, we're gonna use our Desmos calculator. So we've got weeks, we got cost, and what we're gonna do is make weeks our X value as X changes, it's our independent variable. We're gonna see how the cost is affected. That's our Y variable. We're looking for the relationship between how many weeks go by and how much the cost changes in response to the weeks. All right, let's open up that Desmos calculator and play around with this. All right, here I am. I got our Desmos calculator opened up. I'm gonna go ahead and sign on in real quick with my Google account. And let's insert a table of values. So we go to this little plus button here, I'm going to insert a table. And there's my X and Y values ready to be punched in just from what I got. So we knew we started with zero weeks, two, four, whoops, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We went to 14 weeks in our example of John's truck. And we saw the cost of the loan was originally $575 and that it increased by $75 per week. So 650, 725, 800, 875, 950, 1025, and $1,100. Hey, the points are great. Looks nice. We can actually even, there's a way, nope, nope, I got my table open there. I don't see any points yet, do I? I have to think about what scale is. My X's are from zero to 14. So let's come over here, let's go to graph settings, and let's make it so we can see all the points. So from zero to 14, I'm gonna change my X axis from negative two to 20. That's gonna help me see all these values for X from zero weeks to 14 weeks. I extend it a little bit because I like being able to see zero, zero and getting a big picture of stuff. And so I went a little bit beyond 14 as well too. So I want to see the total graph, I don't want to be cramped. Now the Y values are interesting. I'm starting at 575 and going to 1100, right? That's definitely not negative six to positive six. So let's adjust my Y values to go from zero dollars. We'll go up to, let's go up to $1,500. And we'll make a step increase to each $100 here. Mm, that's, I don't like that many lines either. Let's go $200. Okay, now we've adjusted our graph. We can really see each of the points that we graphed, right? And if you remember, so four weeks, after four weeks, I'd come down here on the X value for four weeks, it's costing $725. So on the Y axis, it should line up right around 725. And there's all of our points. It looks like they form a nice straight line, right? So probably, if we're thinking about what we're learning, we're thinking about our algebra that we've learned before, we probably have ourselves a linear equation here. We have a situation where things are growing by the same rate over and over again, and we can probably come up with, with an equation that fits these series of points. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint here, and we'll start playing around with an equation. Here I have my table. Here's the graph that we plotted. Now let's actually try and come up with an equation, a line that fits this graph. So think about, think about what patterns we were playing with, right? We started at $575. That was the original cost of the loan. So in any sort of equation, we need to start with some number and look at the pattern from there. Now, once I start at that point, what is the change happening over and over and over again here? Well, every two weeks, it increased by $75, right? That was his fee, $75 per two week. So we can write a ratio of $75 
per two weeks, which turns into a rate of 337.50 per week. With a linear equation, we love that rate. We love to know how often per one. So every time x changes by one, we increase by 37.50. By one, 37.50, and so on. Let's put together that in equation now. So we change colors. So if I was to say my y values, the cost of the loan is equal to, well, he originally paid $575. But then, as the weeks change, we add 37.50 for every week. We went up by two weeks, and so we saw the change was to add 75 every two weeks. But to get our equation, it's nice to get it down to that rate, 37.50 per one week. And there is an equation that represents this graph. Now let's go ahead and switch back to Desmos and graph it and just double check that our equation actually makes a line through those points. Right, here we are back at our Desmos calculator. I'm gonna turn off all of these values here. And we came up with an equation. We said the cost, my Y values, is equal to $575, the starting value, plus 37.50 per week X. And look at that. We have an equation that goes right through all of the points, like so. Now, some things to keep in mind, however, is with this equation, it's saying right now, if I do on this point right here, there's an x value of 0.9 and a y value of 608.75, which means if he has this loan for 0.9 weeks, he's going to owe $608.75. Now, I don't know in the context of this loan, but I don't know if that's possible. I think he pays 75 bucks and that covers the whole two weeks until he rolls it over the next one. So really, only these points make sense in the context. He can't have in between zero or two weeks or in between two or four weeks. It's only at two weeks that the loan changes and it's only at four weeks that the loan changes. So keep in mind the context, even though we have a nice equation that relates X and Y together, the equation doesn't make sense for every X and Y value, especially when you think about negative, right? This equation can get into negative 1.5 for an X value and 518.75 for a Y value but negative one and a half weeks to only pay $518.75 doesn't make sense either. So there's certain values we ignore realizing the context of this problem. But as we got a nice equation, we could use this to predict what if he went 52 weeks, right? What if he went the whole entire year and just couldn't pay back? Then we could calculate, put 52 in for X and calculate the total cost of the loan. Okay, so there we go. That was introducing payday loans they can get really expensive. We made a graph, a table, and an equation to model what was going on for this problem. Let's look at another problem here just to play around with another example and make sure we really got this idea down. So here we go. Laura takes out a payday loan to pay for her son's emergency room bill of $400. The payday lender charges her 60 bucks for every two weeks. There's her fee. She has to roll over the loan five times before she can finally pay it off. So what was the total cost of her loan? We've got a formula here that is kind of nice to help us work with. So T represents the total cost. L represents the original loan amount. F represents the fee and R, in our case, is the rollover. How many times does she roll over? All right, now let's calculate our example here. The total cost, we don't know. We're gonna find that out. That was the actual question, right? What is the total cost? But we do know the loan amount was $400. So making a little chart, we're gonna start organizing the information we have. 
The payday lender charges us 60 bucks for every two weeks. So there's our fee, $60. And the rollover period is two weeks. So we're gonna put two in for R. So now let's calculate the total cost. In our case, however, we know our, well, it's every two weeks, but the loan was rolled over five times. So actually our rollover is five. She had the initial fee, plus she had to roll it over five more times. Okay, so the total cost using our formula is $400. That's the original loan amount. Plus, she paid the $60 fee one time, that's what that one is, for the initial cost, plus she rolled it over five more times. So altogether, she paid the fee six times. That's what the one plus five is there. And if we calculate that out, that's T equals 400 plus 60 times six. Well, that means 400 plus 60 times six is 360. So by the time she paid that loan off, she paid $760. That was the total cost of the loan to cover the emergency and all the fees of rolling it over five bucks. Okay, obviously payday loans are expensive. Some states are so expensive and they're so predatory in terms of taking advantage of certain population of people that some states do not even allow it or highly regulate it, but it's still an option. Enough so that the Federal Trade Commission has a public service announcement to help educate people on other options besides payday loans. So listen to the following announcement, read the transcript while it's played, and have a fun listening to it. Need cash fast? If you're thinking about getting a payday loan, you may want to think again. Companies selling these loans often charge high fees and interest rates, making the loans very expensive. Before you get a payday loan, consider other ways to borrow money. Ask yourself, Can I get a loan from a bank or a credit union? Can I get more time to pay my bills by talking with creditors or a credit counselor? Do I have any money saved that I can use? Can I borrow money from family or friends? Can I use a credit card instead? And don't stop there. Compare the costs between your options. Ask the companies, What's the annual percentage rate? What are the fees? How soon must I repay the money? What happens if I can't repay? So if you need some cash in a flash, remember, you may have options besides expensive, expensive payday loans. Check out FTC.gov to learn more. A tip from the Federal Trade Commission, the nation's consumer protection agency. Okay, one last thing we're going to get into is this idea of APR. One way to help you be smarter about which loans to take out is by knowing the APR. The annual percentage rate or the APR, is the percentage cost of credit on an annual basis and the total cost of credit to the consumer. It includes any fees associated with the loan. It is the percentage of the principal of a loan to be paid as interest in one year. Interest is the money paid at a particular rate for the use of borrowed money. So when you take a car loan, or a credit card loan, or a student loan, or house loan, you're paying back the loan plus fees plus interest. And the APR helps you see what is the annual percentage rate and how much are you paying back each year out of that loan. What's the cost of the loan to you? So in the United States, we have what's called the Truth in Lending Act. It requires that all loans, including payday loans, need to advertise what the APR is. It's telling you, here's how much you're going to pay to get this loan. And it's a great way to compare loans, to be a smart shopper, and to know what you're getting into ahead of time when you take a loan out. There's a math formula we use to help calculate what the APR is for a loan. So the APR equals the finance charge divided by the total amount financed times, remember it's APR, so it's for the whole year, the annual percentage rate. So we need to play that out over a whole year. How many weeks in a year divided by the number of weeks in the term of the loan? And you multiply that by 100. So if we take a payday loan, for example, here, what is the APR on a payday loan 
that is a $600 loan with a finance charge of $60 per two weeks. Now we're gonna assume for this case that you pay it off in two weeks. So you have the finance charge, $60, divided by the total amount financed. We finance $600. So I'm gonna do 60 divided by 600 times the number of weeks in a year, that's 52, divided by the number of weeks in the term of the loan. Well, we're taking a two-week loan, so I need to divide that by two. And then finally, we multiply it by 100 because it's the annual percentage rate, so it's out of 100. Okay, let's calculate the APR on this loan. So 60 divided by 600 is 0 0.1 times 52 divided by 2 is just 26 times 100. And if I multiply all these together, it ends up equaling 260. What does that 260 mean? It means the APR equals 260. Whoops, not, not a, that's not a cost, it's an annual percentage rate, so it's 260%. That means if you play it out over a year, this is the cost of your loan. It's the loan of 100% plus you're paying back 160% of it. It's a really expensive, expensive loan. If an APR was zero, it means there's absolutely no cost. It means you're borrowing the money and paying it back and there's no cost to it. So 0% APR, just for comparison purposes, APR means no cost. There's no fees, there's no rate, an interest rate, no cost for the loan. Sometimes you can get a good deal. If you're shopping and they say 0% APR for this car, that means, whoa, I'm borrowing money for free and I can pay it back and it won't cost me anything extra. I still have to pay back whatever you purchased, but there's no extra cost. So APR, 0% APR means no cost for the loan. Now in our example of the payday loan, we had an APR of 260%. That means we're paying back a lot of money. We're paying back the cost of the loan plus 2.6 times that if we play it out over a whole year. So here's some things to be aware of. The APR is required by all loan companies to be disclosed so you the shopper can be smart and not take advantage of. Here's some APRs to compare. The student loan, if you take a student loan out, the APR is typically 2% to 8%. That's what you're gonna pay back per year on your student loans. And a lot of times they max it out, like your 20 year period. A car loan, usually you can get a car loan from anywhere from 2% to 6%. Sometimes less, sometimes more, but that's a typical average rate for an APR on a car loan. For a home loan, your APR is typically 4% to 6%, although they have been as high as 10 and 12% if you go back to the 70s. But this is typically right now what you would get a home loan for. And then a credit card, credit cards are more expensive. Credit cards typically, if you get a good rate, at 6%. A high rate is 18. Sometimes it's as high as 25. Average would be about 12 or 15%. But that's what you're looking at for a credit card. Now, let's go back to our payday loan. Our payday loan was 260% for an APR, right? How does that compare with even a credit card? That's a lot of money. You're better off using credit cards and trying to work that out than you are to get a payday loan. Although credit cards, you have to apply and be approved and all that stuff there. And if you're not approved, then you're kind of stuck. So payday, you're paying for the convenience of walking in and getting money and walking out, but it can be really expensive. So there we go. We did a lot of math today. We determined the cost of a payday loan given the different amount of finance, finance charges and all that stuff. We did some graphing, we did tables, we did equations, we determined the finance charge, we calculated the APR and talked about what that is. We dealt with percent calculations, graphing, 
to a lot of good math today and hopefully overall you have a good sense of how to be a better shopper when it comes to loans, how to be more aware of being ready for emergency situations.